Welcome career thought leaders. Excited to have you here and have Kate Pazesnik with us, who is one of our Facebook group members that kind of popped in and said, you know, oh, I'd like to get engaged. So here, this is what happens if you say <laughs> you're <get> engaged. <laughs> you end up on live with me. But I really wanted Kate to share um, some of the discussion that we've been having around how Facebook groups can be beneficial, not just for us as professionals and for our businesses, but also for our clients. And so as you're watching out there, if you have a Facebook group that maybe you're running for your clients, I'd love to hear how it goes, how you're using it. And then we'll share some of, of what we're seeing as well. And then we're also gonna talk about the newest kid on the block, Clubhouse, and what the opportunities look like there. Cause Kate, I know you've been engaged there as well. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. <laughs> So tell us a little bit first, I guess, about who you work with, what types of clients and what your main business avenues are. Sure. Um, I appreciate the invitation. I'm happy to be here with my fellow career pros. So um, I am a career coach and do professional uh, or personal branding as a consultant. Um, and a lot of my work includes writing resumes, LinkedIn profiles and bios. But I also provide a lot of cheerleader cheerleading um, to help my clients have their confidence boosted as they start their job search, interview, and go through um, the negotiation of a job offer. Um, my niche clientele are IT professionals, and you're going to be the first to know I'm actually zeroing in my niche into uh, women. I'm very passionate about helping um, the ladies, and I think that there's a, a major need for some career professionals in the female IT space, so I'm excited to be moving into that. Yeah. Melanie says hi. Hi, Mel. Thanks for dropping hi. by. <laughs> and then uh, Marsha Walt. So thank you both for saying hello. hello. And, um, so you kind of reached out to me and said that you've seen the Facebook group, specifically the Career Thought Leaders group, be helpful for you. Tell us a little bit about how you're using those for your professional development and business development. Sure. And I, I'd love to start with our CTL group on Facebook has been such a huge support system for me. I think that's what I initially reached out is to be like, hey, the Facebook group is amazing. I just wanna tell you I'm getting a lot of value out of it. And what I found is that it's an excellent place to ask questions and it could be anything from formatting to client situations that are tricky um, and anything in between. And so I've always felt really comfortable with posting a question or a request and, and knowing that I'm going to get um, unbiased and objective um, feedback and answers. Yeah, I love how we always get that range and people respond back to each other and people don't always agree, but they're very, you know, collegial about how they respond and interact with each other. Um, I think that's one of the things that we get on Facebook that we don't get on LinkedIn. And I'm in some LinkedIn groups. I'm even in some where the owners try really hard and I have never seen the real interaction like we see in, in our Facebook group and I know others group other groups as well. And it's so interesting how even people that aren't really on Facebook, because I know there's kind of this whole other world of Facebook that some people don't like, but groups right. continue to thrive. Um, and it's just fun. I, I love to see it. It is funny because I've noticed the same thing. Um, most of the groups that I am in on Facebook, if I'm on, in those same groups on LinkedIn, they're not nearly as active. And I noticed that across the board. And I I wonder why that is. And I think that Facebook feels like a pretty casual place to have a dialogue. And I think LinkedIn, sometimes we feel like we have to be on it 100% right. And if we put something out there, it's like everyone in the professional world is going to know. So I wonder if that might be a reason that that um, that takes place. I'd be curious to see what you think. Yeah. And LinkedIn doesn't give you the best notifications. Facebook notifications can be a little bit annoying, but as an owner, <laughs> like I know right away when someone posts and I always wait a little bit and see if, you know, the conversation will start. And if it doesn't, I, I offer up resources. Whereas in the LinkedIn sphere, like I don't even know when someone posts something in my LinkedIn right. group. It's a big logistical issue in LinkedIn. And then I do think on Facebook, people think they're there to interact. Um, so there is opportunity for us professionally. And I'm wondering if you interact in, in any other groups as well, where you kind of build business or what are, what are the other opportunities through Facebook groups for us? Yes. So I like to tell people, if you have goals in life, whether they're personal or professional, 
you should be following Gary V. His his full name is Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, if you haven't heard of him, Google him. You can just Gary. You can just Google Gary V V E E. And what I like about this guy is that he's a successful entrepreneur, but his whole foundation of what he believes in is value, free, and being kind. And I just love that that's, that is what his whole empire is sort of based on. And so I've leveraged it, that group. It's called First in Line with Gary V. I've used it for inspiration, but I've also used it for tech support. Um, and one example I can give you is I, I was looking to build a webinar and needed a way to like get it out there. And so I decided I needed some kind of webinar, webinar funnel. And I went on uh, that particular group and put up a request that I was looking for some suggestions for free or uh, low cost solutions. And I got no less than a dozen replies. And I ended up investing in one of those, which is system.io if you're interested. <laughs> It's yeah, a great product, great yeah. tool. Yeah, if you want to put that in the chat now or later, that would be great. And then I also think there's other groups like my local. So it's called Connect Utah, but it's a business group for Utah. And same thing. I was like, oh, I need someone to do my payroll. We moved from Colorado to Utah a year ago or so, and now I need someone to do my payroll here. And so I reached out on that group, you know, who's the best for payroll? But there's also opportunities to get business, right? I see people and they respond, I'm looking for a career help with this or career help with that. And I shoot them over an episode of the career confidant, right? Because yes. <laughs> it's a way to help per your point uh, uh, from Gary Vee. It's helpful. It's not, you know, oh, I can help you for that service wise, although there might be an opportunity to do that. But I point people to the career confidant and then they've got that resource. And of course, they're hopefully going to reach out to me if they want more help. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And I don't I know you are a mom and I, I'm a mom, but I'm in the mom's Facebook group for our area. And same thing. People oh. want to change careers or I want to do this and I'll shoot them off an episode of the career confidant. Here's some resources or some thoughts for you. I love that. You know, it's funny that that you mentioned um, kind of chiming in to be able to get business out of certain groups. I haven't gotten business out of Gary V's group yet. However, I've been, I've found multiple opportunities to share my expertise in hopes that you know it helps someone. But that at some point they're going to remember that there was some chick with bright lipstick on Facebook who answered a question for them that was. <laughs> you know, that was uh, kind of hanging them up. So yeah, it's kind of interesting what happens. I'll have to keep you guys updated to see if I get any business out of that. Cause you know, you want to spend your time, but you need to convert. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, and I was talking to a group of uh, career service providers in California and they were helping their clients and they said, Oh Marie, how can they use LinkedIn? And I said, well, here's the ways they can use LinkedIn, but then have they thought about using Facebook and let's go on Facebook and search your location for Facebook groups and then Facebook groups related to jobs. And there were, you know, at least three or four Facebook groups in their general location focused on jobs. Now that's not gonna work for every type of job and every professional, but there's right. a lot of Facebook groups, either location-based or industry-based or even alumni-based, and you're in the IT space, right? I'm sure that, you know, HP alumni group, there are a lot of places where people might post jobs that, our clients could be engaged in a conversation in a way that you may not really be able to be in LinkedIn. So I like our clients to think outside of the box too, and other ways they might be able to connect to jobs or connect to recruiters. And Facebook is a way that people could do that. Yes. You know, I've joined several Facebook groups that are, are local to my area here. Um, I live in Fort Myers, Florida, and it's not a huge area. And I think I joined five job search groups that had at least 10,000 members each. And then, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Another, another source was, oh, on recruiters and hiring managers. I joined a couple of those groups too, just to kind of get some insights, not only for my own knowledge, but to pass on to clients. Yeah, yeah. And the data, so job fights study from 2020 showed that recruiters are using LinkedIn less and less each year, which is interesting. It's yeah. gone down from, 
you know, it used to be like 89%. And then a couple of years ago it was 75. And I think it might've even been close to that or a little lower this year. And Facebook stays pretty close around 60% of recruiters use Facebook. And when I talk to recruiters, they say, yeah, we use groups. So groups is one of the main ways that recruiters use Facebook to recruit and connect. And then also someone just asked about Instagram, um, Kathleen, and Instagram is on the rise. So it was around 30% of recruiters yeah. using Instagram now. And I see it every time on, I'm on there, people posting jobs now on Instagram. How about you? Yeah, I've seen the same. And I think it's so cool. I mean, we have all these platforms, right? And if you're looking for a job or if you're looking to help for help someone else and you have access to these free platforms, you'd be, you know, doing yourself a disservice by not taking advantage of them. Um, yeah, and and, and I, clients research it and see it are yes. there potential are, is there potential there because we can get overly focused on one platform. Yes. I, you know, that's when I'm, I'm sure people can relate. They're listening in. It can be so difficult to juggle this. And Marie and I, we were sort of talking about this earlier, just trying to keep up on the advancements of technology and the new social platforms that come up. Um, it can feel like a first time or a full time job. Um, I don't know if this would be helpful or not, but I'm sure there are people who look for easier ways to manage their social media so that it doesn't feel so overwhelming to post on three, four, five outlets um, or platforms is to use a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer. And I know it's come up in these in these calls before, but I would just emphasize again um, to leverage tools like that that are either free or low cost and make your life so much easier. When, when I invested in Buffer, it saved me, it's gotta save me 10 hours a month easily. Yeah, and I've been using Social Bee for the one for, for thought leaders. It, they had a deal on AppSumo. Um, I'm a little AppSumo happy. <laughs> um, they have deals on upcoming things, so it's kind of where some uh, tech company launches through AppSumo. And so Social Bee was on there, and Thomas Pounder, who also in the Career Thought Leaders Facebook group, had said that he, that was something that he used. So when I saw it come up on on AppSumo, I tried it out, and then I just started using Tailwind um, for Instagram only. It also does Pinterest, um, and I may have to get my VA that does Pinterest using Tailwind at some point too. But Tailwind just has a really easy way for you to post on on Instagram and actually schedule on Instagram, which I know scheduling to Instagram is a challenge. So you can schedule to Instagram from there and they suggest hashtags and then kind of catalog your hashtags for you. So I like that as well. Ooh. Yeah. The cataloging of the hashtags is genius. I don't think I have that function. I'm gonna have to check out Social B and maybe Tailwind too. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Clubhouse, speaking of being overwhelmed with new, <laughs> new things. So I have not jumped onto Clubhouse yet because we actually don't have any Apple devices in our household. Um, we're all in on Android and, and don't see any, that changing anytime in the future. So Clubhouse right now is just on Apple Apple Store, um, but I know you've been jumping in there and love to hear what your thoughts are. And I think, Melanie, um, you're also doing some things on Clubhouse. So if other people are on there, shoot us some info in the chat too. But tell us what you've been on there doing on there so far, Kate. Oh, I think it's so cool. And, and I'll have to let you guys know what I feel like in three months. But I was instantly enamored with the app because for one thing, it's audio only. So it's sort of like being on the phone with a group of people and it somehow feels a little safer because you don't have to show your, you know, your physical appearance. So you could be, you know, with a towel on your head or in your sweatpants and still be having these engaging conversations and learning and contributing, but feeling comfortable in your own surroundings, which I know a lot of us don't feel that way with Zoom. We have Zoom fatigue. So this is kind of a, a different way to do that. The other thing that, oh, go ahead. No, I just, it, it sounds really interesting and I, I love that it's all audio. Um, and it seems like it's a little bit like, I don't know, people, you have to be in a room and then you get maybe asked to get on stage, but then people are creating rooms. Yes. It, it sounds, it sounds more complicated than it is because the functionalities of it are pretty limited. So there are clubs and those clubs host rooms or any individual user can host a room. I could start one and I could make it private with just you and me. 
Marie, or I could make it a public room and anyone could join in the conversation. And um, one of the first groups I, I joined that was super helpful is this group called Women in Business. Mm -hmm. And one of the first rooms I attended was for female entrepreneurs who were looking for low cost or free tech software to help them run their business. And that was kind of my introduction. I was like, this is valuable. I got to pipe up and share one that, you know, a software program that had worked for me. And it just felt like, um, it felt like there was this sense of community where people were coming together to help each other. And without sometimes the cattiness that can come out in text form through mm -hmm. Facebook, you know, it's, you have to be really careful somehow, sometimes how you word things. People can understand through the tone of your voice where you're coming from. And I mm -hmm. felt like it's a, in my experience, it's been a pretty accepting and welcoming community. That's fun. Yeah, I've got so many colleagues that are on there. Um, Tanya Smith, who does a lot of our video, you know, teaching about video stuff. Up. Yeah, Tanya Smith, she's doing some stuff on there. And then if you're watching and you're on there, Mel, I don't know, I think I saw that you were doing some stuff on there. She's um, on there, yeah. Melanie Denny, yeah. And then um, who else have I seen? Is it Marietta Gentles Crawford? I can't remember. Someone else was doing a room with some some people coming up here shortly. So if you are listening even to this replay and you're doing some things on Clubhouse, drop us a, drop us a note so that Kate can connect with you there. And yes. then as as it's on Android. Um, I already had my VA reserve career leaders or career TL. I can't remember which one she did. So we've got our handle and we're ready to go. Um, and, you know, I kind of told you, Kate, that I'm glad I can't get on there yet because we were trying to ramp <laughs> up for the symposium and like, OK, February, I just need to get everything done so that in March when I can get on to Clubhouse, I'll have some time in my schedule to do that. So, oh, Melanie said she's doing a, a room tonight. Excellent. Ooh. What can you ask her the topic? I'm kind of curious now. Yeah, Mel, drop us the topic in there. Um, yeah. So people can check it out if they're on Clubhouse or they want to join. Now I know, oh, so Carol Dupree also wrote to me and said that she's doing some stuff on Clubhouse. Um, I'll right. have to figure out how to spell her name the right way and I'll tag her here because she's doing some stuff there too. She's also female, helps female entrepreneurs, yes. personal branding girl, lady, um, and she's amazing. And then someone wrote a question mark about Gary V. So you were talking about Gary Vandercheck earlier. Is he, have you seen him doing some things on Clubhouse? Um, yes. He hosts a show called uh, Afternoon Tea with Gary V or something. And I will say, if you are offended by cursing, you probably won't enjoy him. He is smart as a whip, but he has a dirty mouth. So, I mean, not like creepy, weird, but just he cusses. So just be aware of that if you're offended by it. Um, yeah, so he does that. I actually only caught part of his, and it's mostly about entrepreneurship. Um, Elon Musk showed up randomly a couple nights ago and talked about all sorts of different subjects. So well-known experts, celebrities, but what's most been, been most impactful for me as a career pro is finding other career professionals on Clubhouse who are sharing client stories, their experiences, the trends and best practices you're seeing. Um, and then on the flip side of that is this is another free platform that we can deliver benefits and value to a wide audience. So right now it's um, the Clubhouse app is not really saturated with a lot of experts in comparison to Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. Um, and so the way I look at that is that there is a tremendous opportunity for us to jump in there as experts and to learn ourselves, but then also to demonstrate to our clients that we know how to help them and, you know, demonstrate immediately on some, some value that they can take away. Um, so I could tell you a little bit about like rooms that I'm involved in. I don't know if people aren't familiar with the types of discussions that are being had that would, be impactful to you know people in our industry well it looks like melon's group um tonight is job searching outside of linkedin so that's awesome yes. love that so if you want to check it out you could download the app and you have to get an invite right yes yes and if if you're dying for one i have one just uh 
find me. Well, Kate Pizesnik, that's you can plug that in. You'll find me immediately because no one else has my name. So, yeah, just get a hold of me. I'll be happy to help the first person that, that reaches out. Yeah. But yes. yeah. So there's two ways someone can invite you. But the other way is that people don't often know is you can request a handle on the iPhone app store. And if someone on as a user sees that you're trying to get in, they can allow you access. So try that too. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to try it. I love audio. So I think the other thing for us to think about is what's your thing and then what do your clients follow? Although I think we have to be a little bit careful about that because I, I oftentimes that can become a place of excuse of, oh, my clients aren't there because they're X, Y, or Z. Do your research, just like we would have our client do their research, play around with it, see if it's for you or not, but also think about what's your game. Like I love audio. I've been doing the career confidant radio for seven years, <laughs> an hour almost every week, right? So audio is good for me. If you like visual, then it, you know, Instagram, Instagram might be your game. If you, you know, so I think it's what works for you and your clients where you can meet and connect and think about other ways to connect than just one place. I think at least having two places is good because people will get that other way to interact with you through LinkedIn, kind of that professional piece. And I don't, I don't want to say front because that's the wrong word, but they, you know, they get that professional persona. Mm -hmm. And then if there's one other place that you could connect with people, whether it's building a community on Twitter or on Clubhouse or on Instagram, or maybe even Pinterest, especially if you serve women, but there's some demographics that can help us turn into which thing is the best for us. And then also thinking about what do we like to do and how would we connect with people there? So I don't know if you have other thoughts about how you choose where to be. Sure. Yes. I am currently on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Clubhouse, all the major ones at this point. I was very apprehensive because I don't love social media for myself. However, I am enjoying it because I learn a lot finding content. Um, so if you were to choose two, my suggestion would be number one, LinkedIn. So a lot of job searchers, that's where they spend a, a bulk of their time. But I would also choose something that is, is casual. Like Marie said, something um, like Facebook or Instagram where it's a little bit more, it's acceptable to be a bit more personal and laid back. And I think that's a good place to catch job seekers too. Um, so I, I would say one like really heavy business platform and, and one that's a little more personal. And I agree, find something that you actually like. You know, right. you, you don't have to be on all of them. I'm just a little crazy. <laughs> well, and you're so kind I, of- I like to be Right. You're experimenting yes. with what works best for you. Yeah. And that's great. Yes. Um, I was just thinking that a lot of it, too, is figuring out how to repurpose your content. I'm not a huge fan of duplicate yes. content on all the platforms, but there is definitely an opportunity to repurpose. And um, Petra Zink, who is another person that we've been chatting about. So Petra is in Australia. She gave a, a talk during Career Jam and she's going to do a talk during our upcoming symposium about LinkedIn, but also about how to repurpose content. And so I'm excited for that because I think that's part of our challenge is that when we're on all these platforms, we feel like now I have to create all this content. And really it's just figuring out how to repurpose what you've already done in a way that fits that other platform that you might be on. Yes, that is the trick. Once you can master dividing up content, it's your life will change. I can take one blog article that's 300 words and I can turn that into 15 pieces of content, minimum, um, and make each one a little bit different. So it takes some practice, but it is worthwhile because it'll save you so much time and hassle. Um, I'm glad that Petra's gonna do a session on that because I think it's something that all of us can benefit from. She was wonderful at, at Career Jam, so I can't wait to hear her speak again. Yes, she's delightful and I'm excited. She's. Um, going to be sharing about that. And then I was just also thinking about, you know, as we're doing that, um, sometime in February, March, I'll also be offering an opportunity for people to go through a class that I went through at the end of last year. So the end of last year, I hired three new assistants um, the last week of December. And now one of my assistants is creating the visuals for the posts so that I can do the article, um, actually, I do the audio. I do the audio. 
a VA writes the article out of the audio and then um, she creates all the, the graphics and oh. different graphics for LinkedIn and Instagram. So once you have a process, then you can also have someone else help you. And that's, um, or you can batch your own work and be more effective. So we'll be talking a little bit about that with P Petra too, about the creating a process for content so that it's not so haphazard. Yes, yeah, super smart, particularly if you're looking to expand your business anytime soon. Want to be able to hand off a, a very fully vetted process. Yeah, and then TikTok. Oh, that's a whole nother world. Oh, I'm, yeah. It's so funny. I was just getting up the the guts to do TikTok when Clubhouse hit, and I was like, ooh, yeah. Clubhouse is much, much more my game. It's a little <laughs> safer. Yeah, I know. Um, I said at some point we'll have to get on the TikTok train. I was using yeah. the security issues and you know the possible <laughs> removal of it from US as a as a buffer for a little while and now um, now that that's all finished up, I'll have to, I can't use that as an excuse anymore. You're you not on TikTok? I have a TikTok account. I've never posted anything and I've really only used it for entertainment purposes, but I was talking to a 20 something on Clubhouse and he's like, no, you really should look at TikTok. He's like, you can make videos that are educational and share, you know, insights. And I hadn't really thought of it that way because all I'd seen was entertainment. So we could probably have it, yeah, an entire show on TikTok. Um, we'd have to bring on someone who's actually <laughs> in the game, yeah, who's TikToking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, this has been fun. If you're not in the CTL Facebook group, I'm going to drop the link um, on YouTube and on the main Facebook page. The Facebook group is a lively, helpful group of all career service providers. So just if you're in the careers field, that's a, a resource for you. But I'll drop that down. And Kate, thank you so much for connecting and sharing your experience. I really appreciate it. I had a blast. I, I enjoyed it very much. And I hope that everyone gained something out of our conversation today. Yes, thank you so much. And then thank you for those of you who've been dropping some links in the chat. Um, we, we really appreciate everyone sharing. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank yes. you. Yeah.